Things escalating on Detroit's west side as we follow a developing situation following a police-involved shooting is now police making arrests. Let's get back out live to Victor Williams following it for us. Victor. Yeah, guys, we knew this was going to happen, but the tear gas has started to fly from the side of the police. They're now starting to back up. As you can see, these people are still causing the police to retreat. They are now backing away from that intersection. As you can see, people throwing everything they can get their hands on right now at the police. Right now, a lot of folks, as you can tell, are very angry. A lot of them motivated by what they feel have been nothing but injustices against African Americans. And there goes the tear gas. There goes the tear gas. You see a lot of the people running right now, some of them not even caring about the tear gas. As you guys can see, it's being deployed and they're throwing it right back. They're throwing it right back. They're throwing it right back. We're going to go ahead and try to make our way to a close area. But some of these folks, they're even fanny. <coughs> they're even fanny that tear gas back towards the police. So this is obviously something that they feel very passionately about that they are not going to stop. As you guys can see, nothing right now but tear gas in the middle of the street. Someone appears to have some type of machine here that could possibly be a blower or something like that. They're going to try to blow that tear gas right back. That's what this person has right over here. This is a blower. They're blowing this tear gas right back. Excuse me, guys. They're blowing that tear gas right back Victor, over there. Gonna, Victor, I don't know if you can hear. I'm going to give you a second to try to get into an area where it's a little bit safer for you and where you can catch your breath. If you are just joining us right now, this is going on at McNichols and San Juan. That's just west of Livernois. Neighbors upset about a deadly shooting that involved a police officer. Let's backtrack a little bit. We talked a little bit about what happened before. There was a yeah. shooting that happened around the 4th of July. Detroit police were investigating. They were looking for a suspect in that shooting. They they arrived in that area. They had believed they had found the suspect. They were approaching a car. From what we understand at these early reports, another individual was near that area, near that car. At that particular point, we're hearing two different stories. Detroit police saying that that individual had put his hands in his pocket and there was word of a gun being shown. Witnesses on the scene are telling us different things. We hear there may have been some video of this. We have not been able to obtain that or verify it. Meantime, the crowd is growing minute by minute. And as we said, we've got Grant there. We've got Victor there. Tear gas has been dispersed. And the reason why that tear gas has been dispersed is the fact that some of these protesters have been throwing glass bottles, batteries, coolers, things like that as the police had tried to maintain some semblance of order at that intersection. Again, the intersection, Jason, we're talking about is at McNichols and San Juan, just west of Livernois. And Karen, what's interesting here is Victor just mentioned uh, protesters, people on the scene, uh, not just throwing those canisters of tear gas back, but they've brought in, as he saw it, something to blow the, the gas back toward police. And that's something in covering all these protests we have not seen. And uh, this was a crowd that was... Back or not. Th Victor, can you hear me? Are you, I can't can, hear you. Go ahead. What are you seeing now? So everyone is starting to take over the streets for the most part. All the police officers that were right here They've all now started to retreat. They're all heading down the street. And of course, the chants are continuing now. You guys can see all the signs. You can hear what these people have been saying continuously for the duration of this entire protest. But right now, it does appear that things are calming down just a bit. Yeah, so, Victor, can you talk a little bit more about what they were using to blow that tear gas back? Because that's something we haven't seen. We've seen protesters come out with uh, what police say are weapons to throw at them or things to take aim at police. But that I think that's the first time since this all began uh, weeks ago that we've seen them use something like that. Right. It appeared to be some type of machine that we saw. Now, remember, there was lots of tear gas out here, so it was very hard to see. But from what I was seeing, what it appeared, guys, we're going to go ahead and toss it back to yeah, you now. Let me we'll take, take it back real quick just so we can get that. Got, yeah. uh, and just to point out, the biggest discrepancy, as Karen was talking about, the backstory on this that had people gathering was police told us uh, the man who was killed today was firing at them over his shoulder and running away but as we talked to grant herms talked to a family member who said he was unarmed and now as we take a look uh, above from sky four karen we see uh just uh, so, uh, some movement by police as uh, they try and regroup here 
to handle this crowd. And, and obviously, Jason, just a few weeks ago, you were cover, covering the protests. They very obviously it's so important right now for police to contain the situation. Obviously, we're going to see the video there from Sky 4. We need officers now to obviously make sure that this situation does not grow in, in intensity for the fact that these people are here throwing things and the tear gas is going, but we don't want that crowd to get larger. Many times in situations like this, officers will start to shut down streets along the perimeter just to make sure because there has been word that this is going on. Many Many times people from different areas start driving in to join in on that protest. So right now they're obviously going to be trying to close that perimeter. As we said, this started breaking uh, around that four o'clock hour when we got on at first at four. You know, some people had shown up. They were upset about the way the situation had been handled with the Detroit police officer being involved in this shooting. At one point, they were gathering around shouting, we want badge numbers, we want badge numbers. Now, we had heard briefly, like you said, Jason, from the chief, mentioning that at this particular time, he, he had not indicated that there was any major concern on how this was handled. He did say that that police officer has been put on administrative leave. We have had word from two different sides on exactly how this, how this started, but we can tell you what's going on right now. These protesters continue to gather, continue to grow, but it at least appears that it has toned down just a little bit because the tear gas seems to have stopped being going back and forth, which you had said, I've never seen something like when the tear gas is thrown from the police officers that the crowd basically sends it right back. It's frightening for both sides. And it, kind of important to point out what you just mentioned. I think we're seeing uh, protesters who weren't there initially when this was growing organically as uh, outrage over this shooting death or, or with the circumstances around it. Now, I think, like you said, they want to shut down streets because you can clearly see some people who are getting word of what's going on and using this or at least showing up to the scene to uh, to protest for other reasons. We've seen people who look prepared, like some of the protesters we've seen day to day with the goggles, certainly protesters that show up expecting a clash with police. They have the goggles on. They have things to wash out their eyes with in case the tear gas comes in. And the most evident uh, thing that we've seen is what Victor pointed out, which was some machine, probably a large fan, that was set up to immediately blow the tear gas back toward the police after they threw it. And since then, we've noticed that police have stopped doing that. So it's going to hopefully we can uh, we can get back to Victor here in a minute. I don't know if he's getting a sense if this is calming down. Well, if we were just here and our producer can let us know if we can safely go back to him, because at one particular point there was an irate individual yeah. in front of our camera. Obviously, we don't want our reporters uh, at risk. OK, Victor, you're OK. Tell us a little bit about what what you're going what what, what you're hearing. What are these protesters chanting and, and, and what's the scene? Right, of course, no justice, no peace, no racist police. Those are the things that we're hearing. But notice something that's missing. Those are all the police officers that were out here earlier. The ones that were right here at the intersection. Right now, they are nowhere to be found. Of course, retreating after a lot of these protesters sent that tear gas, of course, right back over there. But one of the people right now on the stage is Jay Bass. He's one of the organizers of these protesters, and he's been at a lot of these events. Right now, he's in the middle of everything, and he is the main one that's chanting. So, of course, things are a lot calmer than they were with the police here. It appeared that even a lot of these protesters didn't even really want them here, and now that they're gone, they're just protesting and chanting and talking amongst each other. So... We're not sure if the police are going to come back or not. We're not sure if this is the end of all of this. But as of right now, none of the officers that were here before are present at this time. Um, do you get a sense that some of these protesters were not there initially as the initial crowd started growing, that maybe they came from somewhere else to kind of uh, just piggyback onto this cause here? Right, 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 that's right. Yeah, a lot of them, a lot of them were not here initially, but as things started to grow, more than likely more people started to come to this site here knowing what happened. So this is the result. Originally, like, like you guys were saying, it was not like this. It wasn't until things were thrown at police officers that it escalated in this happened. Victor, can you clarify? You had said the police have removed themselves from the situation. Are you saying that you see no officers in, in your line of sight at this particular time? As of right now, I don't see a single police officer or a police car. 
One second, one second, please. As of right now, no police officers at all what, whatsoever. And obviously so, that may be a strategy, right. obviously, so that doesn't incite the anger and the frustration from the protesters. Perhaps, obviously, they have stepped back a bit, which we have seen many times in letting this crowd at least contain that intersection. So if someone does want to speak or say something, those words can be heard, heard and the message could be more about the message than potential violence. Yeah, and just to reset, you're looking at the scene on Detroit's west side there. Uh, as a crowd initially grew after a police-involved shooting, uh, the story we saw earlier in our newscast uh, had two differing stories as to what happened in that shooting that was a fatal shooting, and that was police were trying to find a suspect from uh, an incident a few weeks ago, and as they tracked him down, another individual approached police, and they say that individual started firing at police, running away, firing over his shoulder, but family members who were there that talked to our Grant Herms about this said he was unarmed. And in fact, she described it that he was on his knees trying to put his phone away and then his hands on his head when he was shot. So completely wild, or wildly different versions of what happened here. And now you see the crowd moving. Let's, uh, let's get back to Victor Williams, who's on the ground with these uh, protesters. Yeah, guys, so I don't know where everyone's going, but everyone's making their way down West McNichols. So we're going to follow the crowd. Like I've said, I don't know where they're going and not an officer is in sight, but all the protesters are now making their way down the street. So we're going to see what happens here, people. This is a side note. All of these uh, protesters, obviously, uh, m many of them are wearing masks. Some are not. This is a public gathering coming on the day of where the yeah. governor had announced That's this right. announcement. Um, coming out on Twitter right now, governor's office has confirmed that, you know, they did hand down this mandate, but apparently it is, uh, you know, an assembly of freedom of speech, something like this. These protesters w would not be held, you know, responsible in terms of the ticketing, et cetera. We were just getting a lot of questions into our newsroom about, you know, what's going on there in terms of the masking of of, of the different protesters. Um, as you said, they are moving down the street, not necessarily exactly sure where they are headed. If you are just joining us at this hour yeah. here at 545, not sure. let's give you a little bit of a background. It was around 1230 this afternoon when Detroit police officers were actually looking for a suspect. It was a 4th of July shooting that involved um, eight people actually were shot and there was a fatal shooting at that scene. That was the 4th of July. They did some investigating. Officers approached a car in the area where this protest is going on where they believe the suspect was sitting in a car. They noticed another person walking up to them who said that they knew the suspect. Well, that's when officers apparently got into a confrontation with that person and we are told use some kind of hold. The chief says during that hold, the man being held pulled a gun and started firing over his shoulder. Witnesses who say they saw a completely different situation. That individual did not grab a gun. He was trying to go for his phone. In the end, officers opened fire and that individual was killed, brought to a hospital where he later died. Neighbors obviously caught now in the aftermath, wanting to know exactly what went down, shouting, you know, no justice, no peace, and are outraged at what had happened on the streets of Detroit. And this uh, all escalated too, Karen, as we've been uh, following along, even as before we took this live and stayed with it, Grant Herms has been reporting as well as Victor uh, via Twitter, showing just how it escalated and suddenly coolers were being thrown. It was kind of a, a standoff with police for a minute. Then bottles were thrown, coolers were thrown. Police moved in, made a few arrests, and they started clashing. And then there was, uh, again, lines were established again between protesters and police. And then you saw, when we came back on here, and you saw Victor talking about just where police were in that regard. And then we had a, a just a great view from Sky 4 there as they started shooting the tear gas toward these protesters. And they immediately began trying to throw it back, throw uh, the canisters back, and even brought in a blower of some kind, a big fan, to blow the smoke back. And that's almost immediately when we saw police uh, I don't want to say retreating, but regrouping, moving back. And as Karen, as you pointed out, they we could see in other areas of that setting up different perimeters, moving around, trying to uh, change tactics a little bit. And now this group of protesters is marching down West McNichols. 
in what we've seen many nights here for uh, the 30 plus nights of protests where they have a rally, then they march, and it usually culminates. And more often than not, we've seen peaceful protests that start peaceful, that end peaceful, but there have been a handful of days that uh, are turning out the way this one is, and that is clashes with police and where things are thrown, police making arrests, using tear gas, whatever they can to get these crowds under control. And we should point out again, that originally, this was people in that neighborhood upset about what happened, and it has grown into to include some protesters yeah, I can go again if you want. who have been uh, elsewhere. And as we see Victor there catching up, I know uh, he's embedded with these protesters and walking along. But it's now kind of a combination yeah, of people who awesome. were involved initially and other protesters from elsewhere. Victor, what are you seeing? Yeah, right now, people are still making their way down West McNichols. A lot of them right now just chanting. You can take a look and you can see and hear everything that they're saying. What do they want? Justice. When do they want it? Now. Now, lots of people have joined this march since we've started. You can see somewhat of a marching band. You have someone with a trumpet. You have someone with a snare drum that's marching and playing as people are walking. So, obviously, this has become somewhat of an attraction with people joining in. But right now, this is starting to look like what we've seen before for so many weeks, like you said. Just people coming out, protesting, stopping traffic. Right now, people are blowing their horns, but there's not too really, there's not really too much that they can do at this point. So this is what we're seeing. This is turning into one of those big marches, and we're not sure where they're going. But like we've said before, there's not a single police officer that's out here at the moment. So this is going to be interesting. We're wondering if it's possibly going to be stopped with police officers that might stop them. And we did make a turn. We have made a turn here on Liverpool. So we have some people out here, some people out here in their cars driving along as well. Take a look right over there. We have people driving along now. So this is something that's growing. On the other side of Livernois, you can see the long lines of cars starting to stack up. All of the people out here, some of them blowing their horns, of course, in support. Others blowing their horns because they want to get to where they have to go. We also want to apologize for any language that you guys might be hearing out here. A lot of these people, of course, are angry. Now, some of these people, some of these people are now even making their way over here into traffic. Sure, if you guys can hear us anymore. Certainly, uh, the loud chants there we have. And, uh, uh, Karen, I'm sure you would agree that while Police Chief James Craig's strategy for many weeks now has to been has been if these are peaceful, they will let them march, they will let them be peaceful and do their thing. But after what we've seen, you can bet that police are not going to just let this fizzle out tonight. And you saw that firsthand, Jason, when you were covering protests in the past, and, and there has been a lot of talk in terms of how Detroit police have handled these protests and how protesters have handled themselves. And as we've seen in, in, in many of these cases, um, uh, th their words want to be heard, they want to be seen, and the message wants to be heard. But um, now that police have removed themselves from the situation, the frustration, the irritation, and, and perhaps obviously possible violence that has at least left this equation for now. So now the protesters can share their frustration over what had ha has happened earlier today as they are searching for answers in terms of, um, you know, why this individual was killed when the police were trying to investigate this July 4th shooting and, and murder. Yeah. And for people watching at home who might think, well, this is the same group that's marching every day, it's not. There are several groups of protesters that we've seen over the weeks in, in different places, different factions, and they don't all get along. Believe me, they, we've seen shouting matches at these uh, between groups that uh, are trying to get the majority of protesters to follow this message or that message. It's not all uh, uniform out there, and I think that's why we've seen uh, a mix of 
of different protesters tonight, and the ones who come ready to clash with police are different than other protesters who are uh, dead set on me being peaceful with police, who have good relationships with police. Others that uh, Chief Craig has pointed out, and we've seen firsthand, are there to simply cause trouble. And, uh, you, you know, when we see tear gas being thrown back at police, we don't know if that's the, that group of protesters, but there are several groups that uh, come together every day to march in the streets of Detroit. And uh, right now, we definitely know there are different groups within this. How many? We just don't know at this point. But uh, at this point, they've disengaged from police and are marching. And we're going to keep, uh, keep an eye on this for sure. Now, I'd like to see if we can get to Victor. I know that he has been walking along with this group as they are moving. We're, it's hard to give a little perspective of they had started on McNichols and we had felt at one point if they were trying to get to perhaps the 12th precinct. Victor, is there any idea or concept of where this crowd is going? No idea. These guys are just walking at this point and it looks like they're just walking wherever the road takes them. You can hear them chanting the things like I've said before that we've been hearing week after week. So with this happening, this just really adds to all of the frustration and all of the tension that was already there. But you can see a lot of the signs here. The police are not above the law to fund the police. Stop killing us. Those are the signs that we're seeing as of right now. But a lot of these people, they're over at that intersection at San Juan and McNichols. And a lot of them are now still in this walk. But since that has happened, we have seen a lot more people who have joined in, people who have just been on the sidewalk and seeing this, wanting to be a part of this. So this is something that continues to grow. At this point, there is no idea where the police are. No idea if they're even gonna stop this, but it'll be interesting to see if they let this fizzle out, like Jason was saying, or if they, come back down here and stop things once again. So like I said before, we are gonna stay walking with them and we'll see. And obviously, Victor, we are trying to get in touch with the chief and the police department just to see what type of statement at this point um, they want to share or if there has been any new developments or any information that has been gathered since the since the death of 19 year old Hakeem Littleton. Again, he is the individual that was shot and killed from uh, a Detroit police officer. That Detroit police officer has been put on administrative leave. From what we understand, the police officers were investigating a murder that occurred on on July 4th, they had found their suspect. From what we're hearing, Hakeem Littleton had started to uh, approach those officers. At that particular point, we do not know exactly what it happened, but we can tell you Detroit police did draw their weapons. They did shoot. Hakeem Littleton was brought to a local hospital where he was declared dead. Protesters right now want to know exactly what happened, who was responsible, and we do, we really are waiting to hear from, from the chief of police here because this is, situation is growing. It has been a couple of hours, and, and people want some answers in terms of exactly what they can share in terms of what happened this afternoon, Jason. And that's the biggest frustration right. when people don't get answers. Hey. That's where the frustration the grows. The yeah, and uh, as we've learned from police, uh, in the past couple of months, uh, they usually have people watching these protests. They have intel within the crowd under covers that uh, are able to feed them information. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they let this play out until uh, something happens because uh, whenever the violence kicks up, police usually take action, uh, even though many of these have been peaceful, Karen. All right, the situation started a little different. It is calming down. We will be following this minute by minute and, of course, keep you updated. Local 4 News at 6 coming up.